this is absolutely ridiculous of me because I was already in bed <laughs> trying to sleep and I had so many thoughts going through my head about Deathly Hallows that I turned my light on at five o'clock in the morning <laughs> after seeing the film at midnight and decided that I have to film this vlog now. So here I am filming my Deathly Hallows review. Overall, I was affected by this movie a lot more than I thought I was going to be. I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. And I don't, I, I, I don't know, I usually come home from the Potter films with like a whole list of complaints like, oh they got that wrong, they left this out, blah blah blah. But I literally have one. I have one complaint about this movie. Other than that, I loved it. I thought that it was a perfect representation of how I felt when I read the book. I'm gonna go through some of the parts that I liked and that stuck out to me. Um, I really, really liked to start the opening sequence where Harry, Ron, and Hermione are, you know, looking stony-faced and realizing that they're potentially leaving everything behind. And when Hermione um, erases herself from her parents' memory, that just already, like, <laughs> not even a minute into the film and I was already like so emotionally touched by what was happening. I thought the Seven Potter scene was perfect. I liked that they allowed it to be funny for you know a little bit and then went back to the seriousness of what was going on because it's a war and they were about to do something very dangerous and Harry was you know very upset that all of his friends were risking their lives pretending to be him. The wedding was um, interesting. I liked that everyone sort of acknowledged the fact that it was wrong it was, it was wrong to be that happy, but they all sort of needed it. They needed something good to be doing in this, like, really crappy time. And I liked, and I mean, I know this happened in the book, but I liked that it was interrupted by this horrible news um, that the Minister of Magic was dead, and that was sort of what started the journey. And, you know, nobody really got to say bye to anybody. Um, one thing that I thought was funny, the scene where <laughs> Ginny asked Harry to zip up her dress. I just thought that that was so awkward and weird. I just feel like <laughs> Ginny and Harry have absolutely no chemistry. And I don't think this is the fault of the movies, because I felt this way in the books as well. I know that J.K. Rowling used a method of telling us about their relationship rather than showing us. And that just doesn't work for me, like, to really believe in a relationship. Uh, between two fictional people. I need to see something and I don't see anything with Harry and Ginny So all of the movie scenes with them are just so awkward and that just made me laugh. But um, anyway, I really liked How Harry and Ron and Hermione just immediately like started this journey that none of them were really prepared for I mean Hermione had her bag, which was awesome. I love the way that they did the bag um, But none of them knew what they were doing. They didn't know where to go. I really liked the scene in the diner with the Snatchers. I just thought that was really well done. Um, and I liked that there were some funny moments, you know, when the diner lady is just in the kitchen and doesn't notice that <laughs> the diner's getting destroyed. Nobody said anything funny, but they still, you know, it was it was a, a funny thing that ha I don't know, that was just a reoccurring theme in the movie that, like, people weren't really making jokes, but there were still, you know, a few things that we were able to laugh at, which felt good because the movie was so tense and serious that we needed things to laugh at now and then. I really, really liked the use of the radio, the sort of, like, white noise in the background, because there was a lot of sort of downtime with the camping and showing the dynamic between the trio, showing how the necklace affected each person, how, like, lost they felt, and I liked that the radio kind of kept them grounded and, like, you know, it reminded them and us, the viewers, that there was, you know, other stuff going on, that the war was still happening, it wasn't just a bunch of kids camping. I really liked that and I liked that it, you know, Ron needed it and it like got on Harry's nerves so they acknowledged that it was there and I, I just thought that was really good. Watching the decline of Ron before he leaves I thought was really believable and I really liked that. I was really impressed with all of their acting. I know a lot of people have problems with the actors but I've accepted long ago that these are the actors playing these characters so I, I've gotten past that and I was just, I really liked it. I loved, I loved the scene where Harry starts dancing with Hermione in the tent. I, I loved that they definitely made it clear that there wasn't any sort of like romantic thing going on with them, just that uh, Harry's usually the one who's moody and upset all the time, and I loved that he was the one who realized how down everyone was and how Hermione, like, she's usually in charge of them and usually makes sure that they do all the things they're supposed to do, but he realized that Hermione needed a friend and that she needed help, and I love that he, you know, in such a crappy time in his life, was able to just pick her up and be goofy and get her to dance, but I also love that that moment was short-lived because it was a war and they weren't really able to put their problems aside for very long, so I liked that they danced and they smiled and they laughed, and then, you know, as soon as that was done, they just stopped and 
you know, went back to being upset. Oh, going back to the beginning, I really loved the part where they're having like the big Death Eater meeting. And when Burbage is killed, I love that like uncomfortable sort of upset look that you see on Draco's face. And similarly, I loved how uncomfortable and like reluctant Lucius was when Voldemort wanted his wand. I love that the movie, you know, sort of subtly showed the weakening of the Malfoys. I mean, we all know what happens to them at the end. Um, of the next movie where they all, you know, don't even care about being Death Eaters. They just care about being a family and getting away because they are ultimately really weak characters. And I love that they sort of set that up in this movie. Can I just say that the scene at Godric Hollow <laughs> with freaking Bathilda Bagshaw was so scary. I just, she was so creepy. She was so creepy. And all the close-ups on her face and you just, you know what's coming. And I was just terrified. I was terrified for Harry. I was terrified that like the deeper they went into that house. It just, oh my God, that scene was so good. I keep skipping around now. I keep remembering parts that I liked when they went to the Ministry of Magic. I just, that was such good acting. I really, really believed that we were watching Harry, Ron, and Hermione in different bodies going into the Ministry of Magic. It was just so good. And oh, when Ron like is really actually worried for his wife and like kisses her, just oh, it was just so good. When they go to see Xenophilius Lovegood um, to find out about the symbol, I just loved the visualization of the story of the three brothers. I thought it was so awesome. It's a really like stylistically different thing than we're used to with Harry Potter. It was a bold move because it could definitely have stuck out. You know, it's a completely different feel and look than the rest of the film, but I just thought that it portrayed this like children's story that Ron makes it very obvious that like wizards grow up with, you know, young wizards are told this when they're children. I just loved it. I thought it was so visually stunning and awesome and it was like I was being told the story for the first time. I just really loved it. This is the part, the only thing that really disappointed me in this movie, um, in the book when they go to the Lovegood's house and they go into Luna's room and they see her paintings of all of them with the ribbons that say friends and they have this sort of like realization of how much they meant to Luna when they didn't realize that she you know, cared about them and needed them as much as she did. I just, uh like, the person that's my band has a song about that because that image just stuck with me and was so powerful and I was really excited to see that in the movie. So that's the only thing when I didn't see that, I was like, no, I wanted to see her bedroom, no. So I, I just, uh that's my only complaint, but it's something that I can forgive because I like the rest of the movie and I have this really beautiful image in my mind of what it looked like, so it'll just stay there, I guess. When they're all down in the cellar or whatever with Luna and Ollivander and you can hear Hermione screaming upstairs, just, oh my God, that was so emotional. Like, I don't even think I realized how horrible that was in the book because you don't hear it. I thought the whole Malfoy Manor scene was really awesome and Dobby's death was, tragic. I sobbed. Oh my god. And then I like didn't want to talk to anyone for a little while after the movie. I needed to like digest and I couldn't even couldn't even talk about it for a couple hours, which is why I'm now like spewing this <laughs> to my camera at 5:30 in the morning when the rest of my roommates are asleep. I just really really like this movie and it was a really emotional experience because Harry Potter has been with me for so long and has impacted so much of my life knowing that this is the beginning of the end of like new events for Harry Potter is just kind of really hard for me. Um, but I'm just so glad that they did it well. And I know that not everyone is going to agree with me, but I was very, very pleased with this film and I definitely need to go see it again. So yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have to say right now. I'm going to probably think of a million more things that I thought were <sighs> crazy and awesome and noteworthy, but I just needed to get this out so I can go to bed. Um, so yeah, let me know what you thought of the movie and now it is time for bed. Happy Deathly Hallows release, and I will see you all later.